What's going on? Here are some iPhone tips and tricks to help you use your device better. So if you have widgets on your home screen, you can actually stack them and uh, you can put multiple widgets on top of each other. So to do this, all you have to do is press and hold on a widget, click on edit home screen, pick up the widget that you want to stack and then bring it on top of another stack. And just like that, you have stacked your widgets. So you can scroll through them just like this. And also iOS can suggest widgets that you may want to use. If you click on edit stack, you can turn on widget suggestions right here. And also if you have a stack of widgets and you want to pull one widget out of the stack and back to your home screen, you can actually do that. Just pick up the widget, drag it down, and then you can bring it back to your home screen just like that. Also, did you know that you can control your text size on your iPhone from Control Center, but it also goes a step further, allowing you to do per app customization. So inside Control Center, if you click on the text size widget, you can see there's an option for all apps or home screen only. And this is contextual. So if I am in an app like music, for example, and then I go into Control Center and click this widget, you can see it says music only, and then you also have the option for all apps. So let's turn up my text size just for the music app. Let's turn it all the way up to 160%. And you can see there inside the music app now, it is absolutely huge. But if I go back to my home screen, all my text size is still the same. So this is really good if you just wanna have a single app uh, with a custom text size. I'll turn this back to default here, but uh, it's really cool to have this option uh, if you just wanna have one single app uh, that has a little bit more visibility. Here's a really useful one. With iPhones being so big these days, it can be pretty hard to type, especially if you have a plus or a max size iPhone. So when you are on the keyboard, if you press and hold the emoji button, there's an option to make it one-handed. So you can see there are two little icons here. If you click one of them, it'll bring the keyboard uh, to one side of the screen, allowing you to type with one hand. And to get it back to full size, just click the arrow right there. Another tip is home screen shortcuts. So Apple calls this haptic touch and this was promoted very heavily back with the iPhone 6S when it was called 3D touch, but it has kind of faded into the background now and doesn't get used as much, even though it is very useful. So for example, I uh, always haptic touch on the app store app and then click on updates to make sure all my apps are up to date. I also use it on the settings app. So if I haptic touch on settings, I can get right to my Bluetooth uh, right there with a haptic touch. So uh, very quick, very easy, and you can poke around with all of your apps uh, and see what shortcuts you have access to. Another one I use is for photos. If I press on it, you can see you can view photos from a year ago. And one final one is for camera. I like to uh, haptic touch on it and uh, choose take selfie if I want to open the camera and automatically have it on the uh, selfie camera. So uh, haptic touch is uh, very, very useful in iOS. And it's one of those underrated features that not many people know about. Okay, here's one for all you music lovers out there. So if you are in Apple Music and you're playing a song and you wanna pick another song to play after the one that's playing, instead of clicking the three dots and then finding play next and then clicking it, you can actually do this with one gesture. So if I wanna play this song next, all I have to do is swipe from the left to the right and then it'll play next just like that. So uh, you can control your playlist and your up next song just with a simple swipe. Next up is iMessage effects. So if you're sending a message to someone, you can actually do it with an effect. So if you press and hold on the send button, you get a whole bunch of options. So the first one is bubble effects. So this will just affect how the bubble looks when it appears on the person's device. So you can choose loud, for example, or gentle or even invisible ink where it hides the message. And you can also choose full screen effects. So if you click on screen here at the top, you can see we have all these different effects like echo, this one's called Spotlight. And then you also have balloons. So if you're gonna say happy birthday to someone, this would be pretty cool. And you have a whole bunch that you can uh, explore here in messages. So uh, message effects and bubble effects are a really cool way to express yourself inside iMessage. Okay, here's another really cool one in messages. So if you have a message typed out and you wanna add some emojis, uh, all you have to do is click on the emoji button and then you can see all the words here that can be changed into emojis are now orange. And you can actually tap on each word to change it into the corresponding emoji. This is really cool and I haven't seen any other competitor uh, such as Android do this. And if you just wanna change your message and make it a little bit more fun and put some more emojis in there, it's a really easy way to do that. So next is inside settings, scroll down a bit and click on accessibility and then click on motion. If you turn on reduce motion, this will make your iPhone feel a lot faster to use. 
However, it may be a little bit less fluid. So you don't get as many animations. So when I go into multitasking here, you can see that it doesn't really give that float in gesture. It's just kind of really flat. And then when I click out here, it just kind of fades. So it's a, a very flat, uh, minimal UI. It makes it kind of choppy to use at first, but it's definitely way faster. So if you find some of the animations in iOS to be quite jarring, I definitely recommend turning on reduce motion. And also because you're not using as many animations, this may save a little bit of battery life. So staying inside of accessibility settings here for a bit, if we click on the touch setting here, you can see there's an option for haptic touch. Now, if we click on this, you can see you can choose fast or slow. So remember that previous tip in the video where I showed you uh, you can haptic touch on app icons and various things around the OS? Well, you can actually change how fast the device responds to your press and hold. So if you find it's responding too fast, you can change it to slow. And then using this little UI thing down here, you can see how fast or slow it's going to be. So that feels way too slow for me. So I'm gonna turn it back to fast and then you can test out the speed right there. And that feels good. So it would have been nice if maybe they had three options like uh, medium right in the middle, but you can choose fast or slow uh, for your haptic touch speed. So here's one for inside notes. So if you're inside Apple Notes and you're making something and you just wanna have a little bit more formatting inside the note than just a plain white background, you can actually do this. So if you click on the ellipsis button on the top right, there's an option here that says lines and grids. If you click on this, you have various options to choose uh, lines. You have three options for lines and you also have three options for uh, grid views. So I'm gonna choose uh, this line spacing right here. And then as you can see, it puts in a whole bunch of lines inside your note. So this is good if you're taking notes for school or if you just want your notes to be a little bit more organized and sit on an actual line instead of just a uh, blank white background. So coming in last, but definitely not least, I probably use this one every single day, is inside the music app. So if you click on the search tab and then the search tab again, it'll automatically bring up the keyboard for you. So I wish Apple would expand this to everywhere in iOS as for some reason it's only present in the music app. It's completely gone in other parts of iOS. But with phones getting so big these days, uh, if you're holding your phone with just one hand, uh, the search tab is all the way at the top. So it's way easier just to click search again to get your keyboard. And then also if you wanna make your keyboard small, you can do what I taught you previously and you can make your keyboard one-handed. So it's really nice that Apple does this in music and I'd love to see it expanded everywhere in iOS. If you guys found this video helpful and you uh, learned something new, please drop a like on it. My name is Michael. Make sure to comment down below telling me what your favorite tip was. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.